meeting of the Board of Regents of the Texas Tech University System is now called to order. Good morning to everyone, and on behalf of the Board of Regents of the Texas Tech University System, it is my distinct honor and privilege to preside over this meeting on the day that Midwestern State University officially becomes the fifth member institution of the Texas Tech University System. It truly is wonderful to be joined by all of you today on the beautiful campus of MSU Texas in Wichita Falls as we welcome the Mustang family into the Texas Tech University system on this truly historic day. In a few moments, we will hear again from Chancellor Ted Mitchell and we have presentations from MS MSU Texas along with actions by the board. But before we proceed with our agenda, we want to start with this video to welcome the MSU Texas community into the Texas Tech University system family. I'd like to give a big Texas Tech University system welcome to all of our friends at Midwestern State University. On behalf of Texas Tech University. On behalf of Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center. Angelo State University Rams and Ram Bill. Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center, El Paso. On behalf of our alumni team, our national board, and more than 200,000 alumni. Our student body of our executive team. And on behalf of our community. On behalf of the Texas Tech University system. We'd like to welcome Midwestern State University to the TTU system. Congratulations to Midwestern State University. We are so excited to have you. We are so excited to have you join us and can't wait to meet all of you. We're really proud and happy to have you. We look forward to working with you and getting to know you better. For me as chairman of Texas Tech, this is a dream come true. These are exciting times. We're honored to have you as a part of our great system and look forward to many, many years ahead. We're excited to grow and be better together. I have relatives that have graduated from Midwestern State and welcome you all to our system. I cannot wait to welcome my MSU family and friends to the Texas Tech University system family. I think Midwestern State University has the perfect campus culture to fit in with the rest of the universities in our great system. Congratulations to Midwestern State University on becoming the fifth, fifth member, member institution, institution of, of the, the Texas, Texas Tech, Tech University, University system. system. I used to introduce us as the fourth and newest institution of the Texas Tech system, but today, I'd like to welcome Midwestern State University as the fifth. Let's Wild go! Wild horses! Wild horses! We're supposed to sing! <laughs> we are so excited to have you become a part of the Texas Tech University System Familia. We're so excited to have you join our family and proud to partner with you in advancing higher education in Texas. It's going to be great to have a university of this caliber join the system and be part of that North Texas tradition. We're glad to add a little bit of North Texas to a whole lot of West Texas. Congratulations, Midwestern State. We'd like to welcome MSU Texas to the family. We just want to say welcome to the Mustang family. We're really excited to have you part of our family. We're looking forward to working with you. We're there for you, behind you all the way. We also congratulate you on an early birthday in your centennial next year. We look forward to working together to grow our shared values and missions in our second centuries. You bring a high standing academic prowess and excellence that is very well recognized not only in this state, but in the nation. And we now can achieve excellence together. We know that there's great opportunities for us to work together to do great things. I hope the Texas Tech system can provide the leadership to further your mission as a fine liberal arts institution. Raider Red welcomes Midwestern State University into the Texas Tech University system. The values that are long held in Wichita Falls and among the Mustang team fit really well with what we're building for a values-based culture within the Texas Tech system. The future is bright and we can't wait to see what we can all do together. I can't wait to get you guys in the family. And I cannot wait to start this fall semester with you all with a renewed sense of hope and excitement. I can't wait to serve you and your students. Go Mustangs! So Midwestern State University Mustangs, welcome to our Red Raider family. Welcome, we look forward to working together. We're looking forward to great days ahead. Go Mustangs! 
Thank you. We're, we are thankful for the support of our stakeholders, universities, and system administration for sharing the sentiments that we feel across the Texas Tech University system about Midwestern State joining our great system. I would now like to start with some recognitions from our Board of Regents. I would like to personally recognize the Midwestern State University Board of Regents led by Chairman Kevin Crossnow. Chairman Crossnow was unable to attend due to the COVID, but please stand to be recognized as I read your names. Mr. Warren Ayers. <laughs> Ms. Tiffany Burks. <laughs> Mr. Tony Fidelli, Jr. Mr. Sean Hessing, I understand, is unable to attend. Ms. Nancy Marks. <laughs> Mr. Oku Okeke. <laughs> Ms. Karen Lee Pang. <laughs> Dr. Shelley Sweat. and the Midwestern State University student regent, Ms. Amanda Threckill. <laughs> Thank you all for your collaboration throughout this partnership building process. It's because your collective wisdom, vision, and dedication that this remarkable university will be positioned for greatness for generations to come. And thank you for the exemplary service you've provided during your tenure. Much appreciated. It is because of this board and the many regions throughout the history of this institution that Midwestern State has an established reputation of higher education as a liberal arts leader in Texas and has a sterling reputation across the state for providing a tremendous education for its students for nearly 100 years. The Texas Tech University system is extremely excited and proud to partner with MSU Texas and the Mustang alumni and friends as we become stronger together advancing higher education in our great state and beyond. This time, I would like to turn the meeting over to Chancellor Ted Mitchell to continue with recognitions. Chancellor Mitchell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Winston Churchill said, history will be kind to me for I intend to write it. <laughs> and so today we are making history with having Midwestern State University join the Texas Tech system. Uh, I've got a few folks I'd like to recognize and thank for their service. First is President Suzanne Shipley. Uh, Dr. Shipley uh, led MSU Texas for six years. She is a proud MSU Mustang. She is a proud Texas Tech Red Raider. She grew up in Lubbock, re received her bachelor's as well as her master's degrees in German uh, from Texas Tech University. She received her PhD from the University of Texas. She is a former Fulbright Scholar, and she was the 11th president of MSU Texas. Uh, we're going to hear from her in just a moment. I'd also like to thank uh, Provost James Johnson, who is serving as of today as the interim president for Midwestern State University. Dr. Johnston has been with uh, MSU Texas for many, many years. He also grew up just outside of Lubbock, actually just outside of Slayton uh, near Southland. Uh, he attended... Uh, South Plains College and graduated from there with highest honors, then went on to receive both his master's as well as his bachelor's degrees from MSU and received his PhD in health studies back in 2006. So we're absolutely confident in his ability to continue to lead MSU moving forward. Uh, we have some elected officials that we need to recognize, starting with Governor Greg Abbott. He made this possible with his signature on House Bill 1522. Uh, with a journey that started actually in 2019. We appreciate the work that he did in making this a reality, and we also absolutely need to thank both Representative James, James Frank as well as Senator Drew Springer. They're the ones that did a lot of the heavy lifting in, on the House and Senate side to make this a reality. Uh, for our own regents, both at Texas Tech as well as MSU, we have a huge thank you for everyone for their work in making this a reality. As you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairman Kevin Crosno could not be with us today, but I will tell you that he has been a fierce defender 
of everything about MSU Texas and making sure that the traditions and all the, the wonderful things that make this university so great uh, are maintained in the relationship as we move into the same family. Uh, I want to, to thank, of course, Chairman Michael Lewis, as well as former chairman of the Tex Tech System Board, Christopher Huckabee, for their work, the leadership teams, both at MSU as well as at the Tex Tech University System, and very importantly, the government relations teams on both sides. So we have Christina Butts and Martha Brown on the Texas Tech side. Uh, we have Debbie Barrow and Jennifer Smith on the MSU side, and these are the folks that at the end of the day really make everything happen. We have a few of our presidents, we have, actually have all of our presidents here from the Texas Tech University System, and I'd like to quickly introduce, so everybody raise your hand as I call your name. We have Texas Tech University President Lawrence Skubanek. We have Texas Tech University Health Sciences Center President Lori Rice Spearman. We have Angelo State University President Ronnie Hawkins. We have Texas Tech University Health Science Center uh, El Paso President Rick Lang. I want to thank all of you for being part of this historic moment and for your, for your support. In addition to the things that made this a reality, we also have teams of people that make the events themselves special. I want to thank Lauren Masaryk, Hannah Parr, and Adrian Hawkins for everything they did to make this a warm reception for everybody. So let's give everybody a round of applause for what they've done. We had a wonderful dinner last night and we talked about the, the synergies that we all can bring to the table when we all uh, work together. And it was remarkable to me to hear everybody last night talking about their own experiences as, as board members on, on, in both systems at, at MSU and as well as at the Texas Tech System. But one of the things that was an undercurrent and an underlying theme was service, service to others. And I could not, I, I just have to say, I could not be more proud of the work that everybody's done to make this a reality. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my remarks. Thank you, Chancellor Mitchell. The board will continue in open session as a committee of the whole and meeting of the board to consider and act upon the various items and accept a few reports. We will begin with item one, which requests- Mr. Chairman, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Before we jump into that, could I ask Dr. Shipley to make a few comments? Surely. I know that her husband is actually like, I think he's waiting with the engine running out in the parking lot <laughs> for them to head, to head to Tucson, but I'd love for her to make just a few remarks. Thank you, Please, sir. Please, thank you. So, Chancellor, may I leave when I finish my remarks? Thank you. <laughs> Um, as you can imagine, it's a bittersweet day for all of us who have to say goodbye to the old way of doing things and welcome in the new, but you've made it so, um, you've, your welcome has been so enthusiastic and I don't know a single person who isn't just as thrilled as we've all been to join the system. Uh, as I said last night, this is truly the proudest moment of my life professionally and privately as my past joins my present and I, I will I know I will always be so proud to have been the president to help lead the transition. I know James will do a beautiful job of completing it, but thank you all for everything. Thanks for my initial education. It's my tech education that has allowed me to do this. And finally, I just say to all the people who saw me this morning, yes, I really am leaving. Thank you. <laughs> Sir, Chancellor, we will begin with item one, which requests authorization of a resolution to honor the former Board of Regents and the administration of Midwestern State University and mark Midwestern State University addition to the Texas Tech University system. I will call upon Vice Chairman Griffin to present that item. Chair Vice Chairman Griffin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The board is being asked to approve a resolution in honor of Midwestern State University Board of Regents and university leadership in recognition and appreciation of their collaborative spirit in securing the addition of Midwestern State University as the fifth member institution of the Texas Tech University system, effective this day, September 1, 2021, as authorized by House Bill 1522 of the 87th Texas Legislature. The, le the resolution reads as follows, so hang with me here for a second. 
Whereas the Board of Regents of the Texas Tech University System celebrates the collaborative strategic partnership with Midwestern State University Board of Regents and University leadership, and is proud to welcome Midwestern State University as the fifth member institution of the system. And whereas the state of Texas has transferred Midwestern State University to the Texas Tech University system, effective September 1, 2021, following the authorization of House Bill 1522, which was signed into law by Governor Greg Abbott on Tuesday, June 8, 2021. And whereas House Bill 1522, authored by State Representative James Frank and sponsored by State Senator Drew Springer during the 87th Texas Legislature, was passed by the Texas House of Representatives on April 14, 2021, passed by the Texas Senate on May 21, 2021, and signed by the Governor on June 8, 2021. And whereas Midwestern State University approaching its centennial anniversary as an established long-standing reputation in higher education as a liberal arts leader in Texas and as a provider of outstanding transformational educational experience for its students. And whereas Midwestern State University fosters a close-knit values-based culture that aligns well with the component universities and system administration of the Texas Tech University and whereas Midwestern State University will bring significant value to the Texas Tech University system and its institutions as it furthers the system's collective mission of educating future generations and advancing higher education, healthcare, research, and leadership in our communities. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Regents of the Texas Tech University system on this date, September 1, 2021 do hereby extend its heartfelt appreciation to the Midwestern State University Board of Regents, administration, students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends for the vision and commitment to the betterment of higher education in Texas, and be it further resolved that copies of this resolution be prepared for Midwestern State University Board of Regents Chairman R. Kevin Crosno and President Suzanne Shipley PhD, to share as an expression of high regard for, from the Texas Tech University System Board of Regents for their unwavering dedication to this successful partnership. Mr. Chairman, the board is asked to approve the item as presented. Thank you, Regent Griffin. Are there any questions or comments from anyone? There being no further questions or comments, do I hear a motion to approve the item as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Vice Chairman Griffin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I would now ask for, well, Dr. Shipley's gone. Can somebody go get her? <laughs> Vice Chair Nancy Marks, Dr. Mitchell, and Chairman Lewis to join me at the front, right over there by the MSU sign, please, for the presentation of the resolution, please.
Thank you. Vice Chairman Marks, do you have any other comments that you would like to make? Thank you. Chairman Lewis, Regents, Chancellor Mitchell, and system staff, on behalf of the now newly retired Midwestern State University Board of Regents, I would like to personally thank you for all your efforts as you worked with us to bring MSU Texas into the Texas Tech University system. As you are well aware, this has been a very long process, but it has provided an excellent opportunity for our faculty, staff, students, alumni, and community partners to enter into a very meaningful dialogue regarding MSU Texas, who we are, where we've been, and where we see ourselves in the future. Our goal has always been to do what is best for this university and the students we will serve into the next century. May I also take this opportunity to thank the MSU faculty, staff, and students who have joined us on this journey. With our united commitment to MSU Texas, I believe the best is yet to come, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Thank you, and go Mustangs. Thank you for those remarks, Vice Chairman Marks. At this time, are there any other remarks from our board members? Comments? Thank you, Regents, for sharing those comments. Now, Vice Chairman Griffin, please continue with the presentation of item two. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The board is being asked, one, to amend the missions chapter of the Regent rules to add a mission statement for Midwestern State University and update the mission statement of the Texas Tech University system to include Midwestern State University. And two, to authorize Chancellor Mitchell or his designee to make the necessary updates to the Regent Rules incorporating MSU as an institution under the power and authority of the Board of Regents of the Texas Tech University system. Mr. Chairman, the Board is asked to approve the item as presented. Thank you, Regent Griffin. Are there any questions or comments from anyone? There being no further questions or comments, do I hear a motion to approve the item as presented? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Mr. Barnes, please present item three regarding ratification of the existing MSU contracts that require approval by the Board of Regents. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the agenda item requests ratification of existing Midwestern State University contracts and other written obligations that have been approved by the Midwestern State University Board of Regents. House Bill 1522, signed by the governor on June the 8th, stipulates that all contracts and written obligations of every kind and character entered into by the Board of Regents of Midwestern State University including bonds, approved tuition and fees, FY22 operating budget, maintaining employment status of the employees, maintaining student status of the students, faculty tenure, and current funds of MSU are maintained and used for the benefit of MSU. House Bill 1522 considers the previously approved MSU agenda items to be ratified, confirmed, and validated by the Board of Regents of the Texas Tech University System. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Are there any questions or comments from anyone? There being no further questions or comments, do I hear a motion to approve the item as presented? So moved. Is Second. There, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Mr. Bentley, please present item four. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, perhaps before we go to um, Mr. Bentley, uh, this might be a good time to share with the board the news that we discussed with you earlier this morning with regards to Moody's ratings of Midwestern State University outstanding debt. Good. So we received a notice from Moody's on August the 19th 
that Moody's rating service was placing MSU under review. It's never a, a particularly positive thing when the rating agent says, says they're going to do this under review. So uh, Moody scheduled a meeting with us, with uh, Texas Tech University system folks and MSU folks, and says, we're putting you under review for a possible upgrade. The upgrade is solely dis predicated on the governance change from the Western to Texas Tech University system. So we discussed that with them. Um, they uh, said they were presenting this review to their committee. And um, last week said, we want to have a meeting to share with you the committee's um, affirmation of the rating. Um, we explained to them that we had a board meeting today and they said, that's our point. We want to have the meeting with you on the first day uh, of the um, joining of Midwestern State University to the Texas Tech University system. So at 7 a.m. this morning, I met with uh, Moody's along with MSU folks, and Moody's um, has upgraded uh, MSU outstanding debt by two notches. What that means on this particular chart, as you can see on the left, um, prior to uh, joining as of September 1, Moody's rating of MSU outstanding debt was A1. They're now AA2, only one notch below Texas Tech University system. Um, this is for their outstanding debt, and as we have opportunities to refinance um, their outstanding debt, then they will be able to uh, include that uh, outstanding process under Texas Tech University system double A1. Um, this is uh, a, an extremely unusual process that Moody did. In fact, they said they've never done one exactly like this one where there was an independent institution that issued their own debt that joined with another university system under the system revenue financing system. What this means um, is that uh, while it doesn't change the cost of the outstanding debt of capital for MSU, those owners of MSU's outstanding debt just got a premium increase in the value of those outstanding bonds. So um, again, uh, very unusual for Moody's to do this, and they've acknowledged that their uh, committee um, really um, challenged a little bit how they did that, but this is the highest rating that MSU could receive on their outstanding debt. If you look at it and put it into perspective just a little bit, the chart on the left shows um, Midwestern State University with their current rating as of yesterday is A1. See, with the other higher education, public higher education institutions in Texas, um, where they fall, now the chart on the right as of today uh, you see where Midwestern State falls, just one notch below the Texas Tech University system. I, I think it's interesting to point out uh, who Midwestern now is ahead of. I'm not going to call any names, but um, you can see that on the chart. So um, that's my report uh, to uh, provide the board an update on actions that Moody has taken today. They have not published so I need to add the disclaimer that you're the first one to hear this, um, and they will publish as soon as they can later today. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Uh, not to get out over my skis, but perhaps we can figure out how to, that will work to our advantage on trying to make a determination about a football stadium in Wichita Falls. So. <laughs> You know, Mr. Chairman, th this is um, really, as, as Chancellor Mitchell said, talk about the synergies that we can bring together, but a very public, visible confirmation of the value of the institutions working together. All right. Thank you. Mr. Bentley, please present item four. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I don't have any great news about moving up two notches on the credit rating, but they will, they will move up, MSU will move up two notches on not having to have as many policies reviewed by the board. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so that's what, that's what this item is. Uh, this item is to ratify all the existing operating policies of Midwestern State University, as well as delegate the authority to MSU's president uh, to enact any future policies or make any changes to future policies without having to come to the Board of Regents. That's the current practice in the Texas Tech University system, as you know, board, is that uh, there are only certain policies that need to come to the board for approval. Promotion and tenure policy would be one of them, um, and there are other policies as well. But with regard to the other policies, the, the multitude of them, um, we've delegated the authority to the component institution presidents to, to enact those and to put those forward. So this would be doing the same, putting them in the uh, Midwestern State University in the exact same position as uh, the other components in the, in the institution. I would note uh, Barry Maka, um, he's the general counsel at Midwestern State University as well as many others on the Midwestern State team have gone to great lengths to make sure that the, over the last year, looking at our policies to make sure they're, they're consistent uh, with their policies. Um, they've also been on the team, uh, Keith Lamb and Barry, and, and including being on the team for the sexual misconduct policy that we put into place uh, at the end of last summer, pursuant to Department of Ed rules, and they wrote along and their policy is exactly the same. So there'll be a lot of things that'll just be a very, very smooth transition. And uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Bentley. Are there any questions or comments from anyone? There being no further questions or comments, do I hear a motion to approve the item as presented? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Dr. Mitchell, please present item five. Mr. Chairman, with Dr. Shipley's departure this morning on our way to Tucson, <laughs> it leaves Midwestern State University in need of strong leadership. We have that leadership who was placed sitting right next to me so that he would not cause problems this morning. <laughs> so it is my recommendation that the Board of Regents ratify the appointment of Dr. James Johnston as the interim president of Midwestern State University, MSU, Tech, uh, MSU Texas, effective immediately September 1st, 2020. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Johnston has a long standing history with MSU Texas. Uh, he is from the Lubbock area, having grown up in Slayton, re has received his associate's degree from uh, South Plains College, his bachelor's and master's uh, from MSU, and has his doctorate in health sciences, which he received uh, back in 2006. In 2012, he was appointed as the interim dean of the Gunn College of Health Sciences and Human Services, where he served until being appointed as the college's permanent dean in February of 13. He has served as the university's interim provost from 2017 until his official appointment as the permanent provost and vice president for academic affairs at MSU in April of 2017. Dr. Johnston has been instrumental and a lot of the work that has been done to make this day possible. And it is my recommendation that the Board of Regents move forward with his appointment as interim president. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Are there any questions or comments from anyone? There being no further questions or comments, do I hear a motion to approve the item as presented? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Dr. Johnson, please present. Item six. Thank you for this opportunity to present MSU to you in a more comprehensive way. Uh, in our excitement, we have a lot we want to share with you, and I hope you see in that excitement uh, our pride in this university and our pride in becoming the fifth uh, institution with the Texas Tech University system. I want to begin very briefly by introducing the leadership. I just ask if, if each of you would stand as I call your name and, uh, and may be seated. Uh, beginning with the president's cabinet, 
have Dr. Martin Camacho, the Interim Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Beth Reisenweber, Vice President for Administration and Finance, Dr. Keith Lamb, Vice President for Student Affairs, Mr. Fred Dietz, Vice President for Enrollment Management, Mr. Tony Vidmar, Vice President for University Advancement and Public Affairs, Mr. Kyle Williams, Director of Athletics, Mr. Barry Maka, General Counsel, Ms. Julie Gaynor, Director of Marketing and Public Information, Ms. Debbie Barrow, Director of Government Relations. Also with us are academic deans, Dr. Marcy Brown Marsden, Dean of the McCoy College of Science, Mathematics, and Engineering, Dr. Leanne Curry, Interim Dean of the Gordon T. and Ellis Ellen West College of Education, Dr. Jeff Killian, Dean of the Robert D. and Carol Gunn College of Health Sciences and Human Services, Dr. Jim Cerno, Interim Dean of the Lamar D. Fain College of Fine Arts, Dr. Jeff Stambaugh, Dean of the Dillard College of Business Administration, Dr. Sam Watson, Dean of the Prothero Yeager College of Humanities and Social Sciences, and Dr. Kathy Zuckweiler, Dean of the Dr. Billy Doris Makeda Graduate School. These are our leadership from MSU, Texas. Thank you. To begin our story, we've developed a short video to provide a glimpse of our faculty, staff, students, and the campus. So if we'll begin with that. There is a spirit about MSU Texas that draws you in from the very beginning. It resonates differently for each person it attracts. But the enduring spirit always leads back to the people and the long-lasting relationships formed here. You see, as Mustangs with free spirits, each with our own character and style, we run together and work together as a team, representing strength, individuality, and unity. If we are separated, we are distinctly different, but together we create a bond that cannot be broken. It is that same free yet courageous spirit that has guided our journey of discovery and growth since our inception in 1922. As a leading liberal arts university known for strong programs in the arts, humanities, sciences, and social sciences, as well as accredited professional programs in mechanical engineering, health sciences, and business, among others, we are distinctive in our ability to feature high-impact practices among our academic offerings. Designated as a first-gen forward institution, a number of programs assist our students who are among the first in their families to attain a degree. Our transformational Pretty Scholars program provides scholarships to first-generation students, in addition to supporting them throughout their four years of education at MSU Texas. Opportunities for engagement are abundant, with more than 100 student organizations and more than 200 enrichment events each year that inspire, enlighten, or entertain. This includes everything from athletics, fitness and recreation, performing arts, and fine arts for both artists and admirers. All these activities make for a vibrant, active campus that enhances each student's experience and engages the Wichita Falls and local communities. Here, we equip students with the proficiency, self-reliance, and fearlessness to seize opportunities, face challenges, and solve problems in a future we can only imagine. The individual attention provided through our smaller class sizes allows our students and faculty to make meaningful connections. Our students will tell you that they are more than just a number. Here, their professors know them by name. Teaching and learning take place throughout the university in a variety of programs, including a strong undergraduate research program, vibrant study abroad opportunities, and internship programs in the arts, sciences, business, and health sciences, as well as residential living learning programs. As a public university, we understand that while we serve students first, we also serve our community, particularly when it comes to providing a trained workforce in critical areas. Our Flower Mound Student Learning Center was designed to address the needs in workforce education for adult learners, emphasizing select online programs to attract working adults who are seeking career advancement. The center is steadily making progress of meeting this need in a larger market. 
330 MSU Texas student athletes bring a competitive spirit to 13 sports participating in the Lone Star Conference. In 23 years as a member of the NCAA Division II, the Mustangs have claimed 13 regional championships, 51 conference titles, and an individual national championship. We boast a total of 113 NCAA postseason appearances. More than an ideal, the NCAA Division II model is a way of life for MSU Texas athletics. Our Mustangs strive for excellence in the classroom, the field of play, and as servant leaders on campus and in the Wichita Falls community. Since 2019, MSU Texas Athletics has finished in the top 25 in the nation among NCAA Division II programs for service to the community, with tennis, volleyball, cross country, and track finishing in the top 10 among their counterparts. That spirit of service was recognized with the NCAA Division II Award of Excellence in 2019, the top award for community engagement efforts. We launched our ambitious MSU Texas Boundless Opportunities Comprehensive Campaign in 2016 with the goal to raise $50 million in the years leading up to our centennial celebration in 2022. The centerpiece of our campaign is simple, students. Enthusiasm for the campaign is evident in the numbers alone. The initial goal was met just 29 months into the campaign, and in 2017-2018, the university broke the institutional record for total gifts and pledges in a fiscal year with $32.8 million. Currently, the campaign has secured more than $75 million, with more than a year to go. While the numbers alone are impressive, it is the generous spirit of our MSU Texas community that is evident in the gifts received to date. Gifts include funding for scholarships, academic programming, faculty development support, technology, and specialized software. In the same spirit of giving back, our faculty and staff Powered by Us campaign has proudly surpassed 50% giving in each of the past three years, reflecting our dedication to the university's mission. There is a spirit here that is truly like no other. A proud, can-do spirit that unites us. As we enter our second century of learning, we look to the vast horizon of limitless possibilities for our institution and our students. And we do so with a spirit always bold. Thank you. <clears throat> Continue with our, with our mission as a public liberal, liberal arts university. We're committed to developing 21st century skills and education for our students. We are a member of the Council of Public Liberal Arts Colleges with similar missions, and again, uh, sharing those ideals across, um, across the country. As a first generation college student, I appreciate the, uh, the student body that we serve and, and many of the things that we do resonate with, with me and of course, the legacy that began with me and my children have graduated from this great university. Carrying further that same liberal arts underpinning, that strong foundation that we build, we also uh, work on, have a strong focus on interdisciplinary education, uh, learning across disciplines and taking advantage of the opportunities and the knowledge and the expertise that we have here, and again, creating that unique uh, flexibility, marketability, and relevance of our students upon graduation. As an example of this, I'll just touch on uh, the signature minors that we've created. And these are intended to live in one college or multiple colleges, but helping answer that question, when a student asks, we ask a student what they want to do with a particular degree, we add this minor to, to add focus and, and additional skill and marketability for these. So I'll touch on a couple as I move through the colleges and introduce those for you. Beginning with the Dillard College of Business Administration, this college has great opportunities in a number of named centers, as uh, beginning with Center for Nonprofit Management and Leadership, uh, the Dillard Center for Energy Management, the Mamie Rayburn Center for Economic Education, the Muneer Lani Center for Entrepreneurship and Free Enterprise. They also serve a couple of our signature minors, uh, nonprofit management being one, uh, the, the Easy connection is with business, but we also see that uh, among health science students that may graduate and work in a nonprofit funded facility, uh, 
some of our scientists that may work in, non uh, in a nonprofit funded uh, research enterprise. I'll talk about another that they share in, in just a moment. The, the other that I think that I will mention is the, the emphasis on accreditation across, across campus from our College of Business, College of Education, the programs in health sciences. Uh, these mark a, a peer review process and a commitment to excellence across. So it's, it is a lot of work, and I know there are faculty and staff that, that invest the time in that, but it again is our commitment to delivering the highest quality education. The Gordon T. and Ellen West College of Education is one of those uh, innovative leaders in a number of programs that they offer. Uh, as one example, they have EC3 through, or EC through grade three, early childhood through grade three. This was a, the first of its kind uh, competency-based education program, allowing students to move outside of a traditional 15-week semester and demonstrate 80% competency and then move on so the faculty become instructional coaches. Uh, this is an online program and at the time it was approved by the coordinating board, I believe it was the first of its kind in the state. Um, also qualifies as a Texas Affordable Baccalaureate or TAB grant program, so keeping the cost down for those students to move through. A couple of the signature minors in here are early childhood studies, which allows, again, individuals who may want to work in other childcare settings. Uh, also, the teaching and learning. So many of our disciplines intend to teach that discipline, and this signature minor gives them the, the foundation skills in the uh, art and science of teaching, if you will. The Lamar D. Fain College of Fine Arts, a uh, tremendously talented group of faculty and students, and this, their performance exhibitions, productions, are, are uh, invitation of the community to campus, but also their, their innovation in, in connecting to the signature minor uh, focus. Some of those are the multimedia production minor, uh, again, connecting for individuals that may want to uh, promote the, a particular business or entrepreneurial um, undertaking. They also work together with the Diller College on a marketing communications minor. So again, the, the web-based skills or production materials to, uh, to advance a, a particular business or enterprise. The McCoy College has certainly championed our, our undergraduate research endeavors. They've held for the last 17 years a under, summer undergraduate program they were among the leaders in our current undergraduate research program called Eureka. It started out as our quality enhancement plan uh, several years ago and is now a, a, a deeply rooted high impact practice on campus. Also home to our, just like week, last week, our uh, ABET accredited engineering program was just reaffirmed for another six years with no, with no follow up. So tremendous work for those of you who have ever dealt with, with ABET as, as an accreditor there. Uh, great, great accomplishment. Our chemistry program also ACS accredited. The Wells Foundation has provided support for that chemistry program for the last 40 years with scholarship and research funding. Some of the signature minors, again, this interdisciplinary uh, offer in, in uh, cybersecurity and computational science, high performance computing. Then the Prothero Yeager College of Humanities and Social Sciences, in addition to having very strong programs in discipline. Uh, they also offer the, the lion's share of our core curriculum, so building that strong liberal arts foundation for, for all of our students. Also mentioned that, that much of that core is delivered by tenure or tenure track faculty, so we have the, the faculty with expertise to bring that passion to, to the core and, and provide that strong underpinning. A couple of interesting uh, signature minors from this one are, are uh, Spanish for the Professions, uh, working with our world languages and culture to develop a, an immersion experience for uh, developing Spanish competency for business, for health for healthcare uh, as, as examples. So a great collaboration there. The Robert D. and Carol Gunn College of Health Sciences and Human Services, still our, our largest college. It uh, constitutes about 38% of our student population. It also gave us the opportunity to design Centennial Hall around this whole idea of interdisciplinary education. They hold now uh, code events across campus, 
uh, they use our theater majors, for example, as scripted patients, scripted family. We've had our mass communication majors that are uh, working in the, in the phrase of these very realistic uh, experiences. We've even had, a, on occasion, our university police officers uh, be a part of these experiences. But it adds, again, that same respect across campus. So when, uh, for example, a nursing major and theater major walk, major walk away from that, the, the, the mutual respect for uh, what they were able to do to create the, the realism in that. It also gives us the opportunity to provide these uh, skills in our uh, high fidelity simulation center for United Regional and their emergency response teams in the hospital. And finally, the, the Makeda Graduate School, uh, they offer the coordination of graduate programs and promotion of graduate pro programs across campus. This named uh, school also allows scholarship opportunities for our graduate students. This also houses our Office of Sponsored Programs and Research, and I, and I mentioned that it began as a pre-award program, and through the work of uh, Dr. Zuckweiler and her team, they have a NIH grant that uh, they are in the middle of to expand that to pre- and post-award support. So. Uh, very appreciative of, of that work as well. I want to turn it over to Dr. Beth Bryson Weber to uh, talk about our budget and, and facilities. Good morning. Thank you for being here this morning on such a momentous occasion. I will now provide highlights of the FY 2022 budget, along with our beautiful campus facilities. With the conclusion of the 87th legislative session in May of this year, we knew at MSU that we would have to reduce our biennium funding from the previous biennium, the one that we're currently in, by 5%. That meant $1.55 million being returned to the state, which we did in May. We also found out that for the new biennium, our actual um, support is being reduced by $1.2 million. So about $550,000 is being reduced in our operating budget for support. So we built that in. Good news, though, is that the legislator, legislature added $380 million of support across the state of Texas to fund enrollment growth. That was very, very good news. And we know that that was a result of key leaders in higher education, some of whom are in the room today, to make that happen. So thank you for that. There were no additional appropriations allocated to fund inflation. You can see that on this slide which shows that since fiscal year 2007, we have had flat formula funding on the instruction and operation rates. We're going to be $55.66 per hour for fiscal year 23, so flat for many, many years. In building our budget, because of the pandemic, for, at fiscal year 2021, we built it basically flat declining enrollments. We also had budgeted for reduced, canceled, postponed activities, those that we knew were not going to be able to be had given the pandemic. For fiscal 2022, however, we are looking at modest enrollment growth, and we're cautiously budgeting for return to normal in terms of activities. At the same time, we are maximizing the federal HERF funds, those are the higher education emergency relief funds, both for their impact for their students and also for institutional support. This slide shows a summary comparison of the budgeted revenues and expenses. For fiscal year 2022, our budget will be almost $124 million. This represents a 1.88% increase over the previous year. It's really based on tuition and fees increasing. And also in the expense side, what's really noteworthy is the debt service costs are going down over $1 million. That budget relief is allowing us to invest in our personnel and our compensation to allow for a 2.5% merit and cost of living increase for faculty and staff, along with small pools for equity and salary compression purposes. This slide basically recaps that since fiscal year 2017, our annual average growth of the budget has been 2.4%, so modest. 
I want to, on the right side in that box, the noteworthy pieces really are the grants, um, gifts, contracts will be $24 million this new year, growing 17% since 2017. That is directly related to the successful comprehensive campaign that was led by President Suzanne Shipley. It's also evident in our endowment market value, which is hitting a milestone um, this month at $101 million. So when we take our Midwestern State University budget of $124 million and add it into the Texas Tech system, it represents 4.9%, so similar to the Angelo State University in size. In a pie representation, what we see for revenue is that the main revenue driver at MSU is tuition and fees at 40%. Second to that is state appropriation at 24% followed by gifts, grants, and contracts at 19%. On the expense side, very typical to higher education institutions, it's all about people. Our compensation costs are almost half of our budget, followed by scholarships at 22%, and then maintenance and operations is the third at 16%. Facilities overview, let's get to some fun stuff. The architectural style that's consistently used on the Midwestern State University campus is called Lombard Romanesque. That's from the 11th and 12th centuries. Actually, there's a beautiful church that's standing today, built in 1155 in Pavia, Italy. It's called the Basilica di San Maggiore, and its design elements that you can see today, towers, arches, and tile roofs, are throughout the Midwestern State campus. In fact, on the left picture here, that's our oldest building on campus, Hardin Administration, built in 1937. You see the tower, the arches. To the right top is Ligon Coliseum, my favorite building, built in 1969. And then the bottom right is built, <laughs> it's a beautiful sign for the Wichita Falls Museum of Art, which is part of Midwestern State, and it was just done in the past year. So very consistent. Centennial Hall was the largest project recently completed, August 2019, $41.4 million TRB funded, 81,000 square feet. What's noteworthy here, you have the Sim Labs on the right um, top picture, the bottom right though, that beautiful Mustang fountain that's in front of the building was the inspiration of our very own Dr. James Johnston. I actually think the whole building was his inspiration, but, but even the fountain, it's pretty tremendous. Moffitt Library renovation, $7.5 million TRB funded, was completed in August 2020, and even amidst, amidst the uh, pandemic, our students couldn't wait to get in that library to use it. It's beautiful, the colors are inspired by the beautiful Texan wildflowers, such as the blue bonnet, Other recent projects, um, the top right is a facility shops building, very, very nice, funded by Heath. It shows that brick, it's a five color brick that we've been using across campus. It houses our trades, electricians, plumbers, and carpenters. Bottom right, that's the new, uh, new purchased, um, let's see, new building that we purchased just in December 2019. It houses purchasing and warehouse facility. And what's noteworthy about that is that it was a strategic addition because it expanded our footprint of the campus quite a bit west on Midwestern Parkway. Projects planned, number one priority, Bolin Science Hall renovations and addition, the renderings on the top right. That TRB request is still alive, and we are hoping for a yes. Bottom right is a pro uh, project. It's actually taking what the Daniel Building, which was in the it's in the heart of campus, and it was used for warehousing and facilities. We are renovating it to be a student center where our Greek life and various um, student services will be housed. We have a $5 million gift from a major donor that's funding that, and we hope it will open in spring of 2022. 
my last slide, residential housing. We have a bed capacity of 1,700. We're budgeting a um, occupancy rate of 90% for the fall. In comparison to previous years, that favors, um, let's see, fiscal year 21, last fall, we were at 89%. And pre-pandemic, we were at 93%. So we have really held our own very well during this pandemic. Bottom pictures, the um, left side there is Legacy Hall. That's the newest addition to our portfolio of residencies. It's a traditional uh, first year um, design. Center bottom is Sundance Court, apartment style living. And then the bottom right is the Bruce and Graciela Red Wine Fitness Center also housed at the Vincent House Health Center where you can get a free vaccine students. And um, it's a beautiful facility for all faculty, staffs, and students in the community to use. So that is the end of my presentation. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Keith Lamb, Vice President for Student Affairs. Keith, and I'll help you here. There you go. Yeah, thank you, I need help, so. Good morning. Morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you all this morning and, and welcome you all to campus and uh, really a pleasure to visit with you all about our student body, who our students are, and uh, some of our student life programs. And if you have any questions throughout my remarks, please, uh, please ask those. I want to make sure that, that you have all your questions answered. Um, as you are aware, we have two physical locations where our students attend classes. Here in Wichita Falls, this is our residential, traditional type of campus, certainly our largest campus. Uh, and then in Flower Mound, we have a student learning center, as you've heard. Uh, this fall, we'll enroll about 550-ish students there. That's what we expect around Census Day. Those are upper level programs there, so junior, senior year, and graduate programs no residential facilities there. Uh, but who are our students? Who are the students now that are joining um, uh, the system? And, and the reason that we are all here, certainly. So our students number um, about 6,000 uh, any given semester, plus or minus 150-ish uh, students. As you see in, in higher ed in general, largely female, about 60, 40 female on the undergraduate side a little more so female on the graduate side. Uh, first generation, you've heard uh, a little bit this morning about our first generation population. About 53% of our students uh, in the fall of 2020, and this is fall of 2020 data, so this is a snapshot from our census day in fall of 2020. About 53% first generation college students. Uh, at the graduate level, a further 25% uh, graduate students identify as first generation college student. And that's significant uh, in the, the population that we serve and the opportunity uh, that Ms. Midwestern State University offers uh, students, the opportunity to, to improve their, um, their and their families' um, um, futures. About 38% of our students, undergraduates, receive the federal Pell Grant. 29% uh, of our undergraduates reside on campus. Uh, when we subtract Flower Mound out of that, because we do not have residential facilities in Flower Mound, about 31% of our undergraduate students here in uh, Wichita Falls reside on campus. About 75% of our undergraduates are full-time, uh, about a third of our graduate students are full-time. And you can see the, the online-only delivery or um, uh, students who attend online only, very heavy on the graduate side, about 71% of those students are online only. So we have a number of online programs, uh, especially at the graduate level. Uh, where do our students come from? Well, if you take Wichita County and Education Service Center Region 9 as a whole, and Wichita County is in Education Service Center Region 9, about 39% of our students are from this area. Uh, so plurality of our students right now are from this area. Every year that decreases just a little bit and DFW and Metroplex increases. Uh, so right now about a third of our undergraduate students are from DFW. About a quarter of our graduate students are from DFW. 
Uh, and then you can see the distribution through other Texas counties. Um, uh, of note, uh, international, we typically run about 10% international uh, at Midwestern. Um, last year, fall of 2020, due to embassies being closed throughout the world, and we all experienced this, we had a decrease in international students. So last year, about 8% of our students were international. Uh, it is back up again this year with embassies having been open and us being able to receive uh, more international students. Our international students come from anywhere from 50 to 55 countries, depending on the semester. Uh, our largest region of the world uh, where we attract students is the, the Caribbean, the Eastern Antilles. And we also have large number of students from South Asia uh, and Latin America. We are a very diverse student body uh, at Midwestern. Um, you can look there, our undergraduate um, students look more like Texas than Wichita County does. Our graduate students are more representative of uh, Wichita County uh, race and ethnicity distribution. We are a very diverse campus and increasingly so. As you saw, we participate in NCAA Division II athletics. We have 13 women's and men's sports and we participate in the uh, Lone Star Conference. I would note here that, that for those of you familiar with Midwestern, historically we've been known as a basketball and a soccer school. Those are our um, kind of what we have been known for throughout the institution's history. More recently, football, with a lot of success in football having been reestablished here in 1989. Um, and even more recently, we have emerged as a Division II tennis power in both men's and women's. Interestingly, our only individual national championship is in women's golf. Uh, and so um, we, uh, we have, uh, are beginning a, a legacy uh, in golf and uh, it's probably my favorite sport to watch. <laughs> Not my children's, but, but mine. Uh, as noted multiple times, uh, we serve a large number of first generation students. And these are some of the programs that have been crafted here over the years, uh, more recent years, to serve those students. We very proudly partner with the, uh, the Pretty Foundation uh, here in Wichita Falls. Uh, the Pretty Foundation um, supports 60 students, so 15 per classification, 60 first-generation middle-income students, full cost of attendance, to, so that's tuition fees, room, board, books, and incidentals for four years, plus a required study abroad experience. That's very important to us, and, and there's, there's a number of, of studies that we do around this program and these students. Very important to us that we uh, allow these first generation students to go abroad and experience different parts of the world. Um, we have a, an office that supports first generation students first to go. Uh, and then we have a Mosaic Cross Cultural Center, and, and we recognize the, uh, the intersection of many cultures, many underrepresented cultures on, in college um, uh, um, education and first generation students. And so we try to realize those synergies through the Mosaic uh, Cross Cultural Centers and provide robust support for these students. As Dr. Reisenweber mentioned, um, this spring we will open the, uh, the uh, Bridgeville Activity Center in Kennedy Greek Commons. The building uh, in which we are located this morning is our student center. Our student center is a building in which we have outgrown. Uh, it is not conducive to further expansion or renovation. And so as Dr. Rice and Weber mentioned, we, have, have, um, we are utilizing the old facilities building, which is just across the street, uh, to expand our student life offerings for an increasing residential campus. Um, the centerpiece of that uh, will be larger uh, chapter suites in Greek space for our Greek letter organizations, uh, which will be the Kennedy Greek Commons. We're very excited about moving into that building this spring and what that will do for student life on our campus. Our, we have a, a very proud alumni base. You can see the, the distribution uh, here of our living alumni. Uh, certainly um, all around the country uh, and, and, and the globe for that matter. Um, and I will say it's a, it's a very proud alumni community. 
Um, it's a very close-knit alumni community, and that's really fostered um, by the authentic relationships that we develop with our students um, at Midwestern. It, it's a, a, a very um, important part of the education that we offer, uh, these authentic relationships and working one-on-one -on -one with our students, and you see that carry through our alumni association uh, and the relationships that we continue to have with them, and, and I'm very excited for you all to meet those alums, many of whom actually work at institutions within the Texas Tech system. And, and now Dr. Johnston will finish up for us. Uh, Dr. Lamb, before you step away, yes, what, in light of the significance of the first gen student, yes, what what is your first year retention rate? It well it. So we typically are around between 68 to 70 percent. Um, as with everyone else, we dipped uh, during COVID last year, so we'll wait on census to have that official number, but t typically 68 to 70 percent. 75 percent is our goal. Uh, if you look at our student profile in the, in the first generation status, we, we do fairly well compared to institutions with similar profiles, but we believe um, with, with, uh, with our support, we should be around 75% or more. I will tell you the Pretty Scholar Program, which is a, um, a very high touch intrusive intervention environment, uh, we're about 93% uh, in that program. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you for indulging us. I, again, uh, very proud of, of, of the things that we've, we've accomplished and we offer here. I wanted to uh, close with just this last part about our shared governance and commitment to that. Uh, over our time, we've, we've found that, and I think Dr. Mitchell has, has said this, we're greater together. The more opportunities we have to invite our governance groups, our community's interests to, to weigh in on everything from uh, our mission, our strategic planning budget, um, the, the better outcomes that we have. And it's uh, certainly uh, highlighted through this pandemic. I had committed to uh, continuous communication as did cabinet, uh, just wanting everyone to, to be aware of, of the decisions that were being made. Sometimes in the, those are, are emergent situations, it's, uh, it's difficult to, to get that way in and, and get the, the guidance and, uh, and input. But uh, I did want to close by uh, inviting our leadership of our governance group to, to bring greeting. So we have this morning, uh, Dr. Karen Moriarty, the Chair of Faculty Senate, uh, Reagan Foster, Chair of Staff Senate, and Austin Strode, our President of our Student Government Association. So if you would come up and. I can breathe. Good morning. Chairman, Regents, Chancellor, and system sister facility uh, presidents. Uh, thank you for coming to Midwestern. And yes, I am nervous. I will tell you, I was asked if I could speak for a couple minutes and I said, sure, be glad to. And then I started reading your bios, Regents. <laughs> and I started to get nervous. And then I was thankful that I didn't have time to read the bios for the rest of you folks because I'd be <laughs> feigning right now. But anyway, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about what the faculty bring to this um, relationship with tech. Now, you can't live in Texas and not have heard about tech. Everyone knows about Texas Tech. And actually, I would even go out to say that you can't live in the United States and not know about tech. And for me to talk about the faculty might seem kind of strange because I'm not from Texas. I'm often asked, are you from Texas? And I say, no, but I got here just as quick as I could. And I actually have degrees from some of the other systems uh, schools, I, UT Arlington, West Texas A&M. But I will tell you that one of my most influential faculty members was a physician who was practicing at Texas Tech in Amarillo. So back in the 90s, I was doing some clinical experiences. I'm, a, I'm sorry, I'm associate professor of nursing and a family nurse practitioner. So I was doing my clinical rotation up at the clinic across from the hospital. I know that many of y'all know that. And um, I landed in the pediatrics clinic with Dr. Boger. Now, Dr. Boger is no longer with us, but he was a larger than life, six foot six, 
teddy bear of a man that just put me in the group with his medical students and residents and said, you're going to learn with this bunch. And he said, by the way, wear a long lab coat because you'll get more respect if you do. The short lab coats go with the med students and the residents wear the long ones. I'm like, yes, sir. But he definitely exhibited to me a heart for students and a passion for teaching. And I will tell you that you will find that with the faculty here at MSU. The faculty are phenomenal. And no, I did not attend Midwestern, but I can tell you that I've had experience in reviewing the curriculum. I sat on the core curriculum committee when we were right in the midst of revising our core and read many course syllabus and materials. And I often left thinking, I want to take that course, or I want to take that course. And I've also served on the Tenure and Promotion Committee and seen these fantastic portfolios of our faculty and what they're doing and what they're producing in their scholarship. And it is mind-blowing. And so I will tell you that the fa what the faculty bring is a lot of creativity and innovation. They cannot do that in a vacuum. We have the support of our deans and our administrators, which is fantastic. You heard Dr. Johnson mention about shared governance. So shared governance is only as good as those who want to participate in it. It's like breaking one of those popsicles in half and want to share half. Well, if nobody's there to take it, you're going to be stuck with the whole thing. Might not be too bad, but, but anyway. Um, so you will find in the faculty, they're willing to roll up their sleeves and go to work. They are involved, they want to be involved, they want to influence the future of this institution, they want to have an impact on their students. And I am glad to, I'm really fortunate to be able to represent the faculty and I'm glad to be one too. Thank you. Before you speak, let me put you at ease. Not all of our resumes are all that ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, my name is Reagan Foster. I serve as the Assistant Director of Athletics for Student Athlete Development and Outreach. Um, I have two degrees from Midwestern State, um, a third from a university we won't, we won't talk about, and I've been at Midwestern for about 21 years now. Um, I also serve as an adjunct instructor for our West College of Education. Today is a momentous day and I get to stand before you representing 409 staff members at this institution. They have a combined total of 3,335 years of experience serving our students. We are really proud of our history. We're proud of our educational mission, the successes that we've all achieved together, but most importantly, we are proud of our graduates because we know that they go out and change the world. On behalf of the MSU Texas staff, I want to personally thank Dr. Mitchell, each of you regents and special guests from the system leadership on joining us here on our beautiful campus on this historic day together. I also want to thank Dr. Shipley, her staff, and our regents who dedicated their time, their effort, and their energy to pave the way for this alliance today to become a reality. Under Dr. Shipley's leadership, shared governance has become a part of our campus culture. You saw the workings of our Budget Oversight Committee where we have faculty and staff and students who work together to ensure that we are being physically sound with the monies that we have. Shared governance promotes the empowerment of all stakeholders, ensuring the needs of our student, faculty, and staff are considered in the division, decision making and everyone has a seat at the table. We value the opportunity to have conversations regarding diversity, equity, inclusion, strategic planning, and issues dealing with a pandemic. We look forward to this continued process with the Texas Tech University system. Congratulations to you, Dr. Johnston, on being named our interim president. We look forward to working with you and have great faith in the work that you will do. Thank you for this opportunity to address you all today. We look forward to working together to ac accomplish our individual and shared goals. Thank you. Before I start, I just want to say thank you to the board for picking this time to uh, have the meeting. I got to sleep in today and miss my 8 a.m., so <laughs> uh, my name is Austin Strode. I am the student body president here, and I'm going to be real brief. I just want to thank the faculty and students I've been able to work with over these past few months. 
we truly have amazing faculty and students on campus who are really prepared to step up to leadership positions. Um, other than that, I am very excited for what the future holds with tech. I've noticed a lot of times, especially these past couple of weeks as we've been starting classes, um, just a lot of working together with the Texas Tech system. So on behalf of the MSU student body, thank you. Thank you all, and again, our, our apologies for exceeding time, and uh, that's our presentation, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I had a question for Dr. Johnston. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Regent Acosta, and thank you so much for your presentation today and um, introducing us to the full team. We're so excited and um, equally anxious to get started on our, on our partnership. I had a question about uh, faculty. You just reminded me about something. There's a big trend right now about tenured faculty, and this may be something you can answer for me later. It may not be appropriate at this time, but maybe think about it and think, you know, I'd like to know what your tenured faculty looks like, especially by gender. And at any time you can send us that or send it to Chairman Lewis. I just, I'm curious as to where uh, MSU is with um, the progress of tenured faculty in terms of gender. Yes, absolutely. And, and we have those numbers. We've, we've improved each year on the number of tenured and tenure track uh, faculty by, by gender. And uh, I present that uh, historically to, to the region. So happy to give you latest numbers. So uh, proud to say that we've continued to improve that and our Faculty, we evaluate for tenure and promotion on their teaching scholarship and service, and we are a teaching-focused institution. So it's, it's also uh, great for me to see the number of our tenure, our senior faculty, tenure and tenure-track faculty that are engaged in undergraduate education, particularly the freshman, sophomore level. Um, I've always said as we recruit and retain students, our admissions people can get students to the door, but they, they can't deliver the passion that an individual faculty member has for a discipline. So very blessed to have that uh, as part of, a part of MSU. Excellent, well thank you and congratulations being named interim president. Thank Look you. forward to working with you. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, for that report. Are there any other questions or comments from anyone? With all open session business now being completed, the board will now convene an executive session as authorized under sections 551071 through 074 and 076 of the Texas Government Code.
The board will now reconvene into open session. Regent Griffin, please present the motions regarding the items discussed in open session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First item of business is this. I move that the board delegate to Chancellor Mitchell the authority to appoint, set the charge to, and determine the process to be used by a presidential search committee in the search for a new president of Midwestern State University in accordance with the regent rules and under the terms and conditions set forth in executive session. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Mr. Chairman, the second motion. I move that the board delegate to Chancellor Mitchell or his designee the authority to proceed with the initial steps necessary to establish a tax-exempt 501c3 organization at the Texas Tech University system in accordance with the terms and conditions set forth in executive session. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. The final item of business today are announcements. We had a very exciting and productive day, but before we adjourn, I would like to say a couple things. I'd like to give a big thank you uh, to our IT and audio people, our visual teams at the Texas Tech University System for bringing this meeting here at MSU, and for those at MSU Texas who helped the planning, logistics, and preparation for this special call meeting. Your efforts and time are very much appreciated. I'd also like to thank Midwestern State Campus Community, the MSU Texas Administration, and everyone in the Mustang family for the hospitality you have shown us all since we arrived yesterday and with all the plans for the rest of today. This is a day we have been looking forward to and we are thankful for all you have done for this gathering. There are defining moments that occur with any existence of any university. A university's founding is certainly one such occasion. And I would argue that today's celebration is another defining moment in Midwestern states almost 100 year history. And in gathering today, the sense of excitement and pride that fills the air is palpable. In the first published bulletin of the then Texas Technological College, the founding president Paul Whitfield Horn and the board of directors wrote of their vision of the college that is to be. And in that vision, Dr. Horn and the board advocated for a college that existed for the sake of students and not for the sake of the college in and of itself. He and the board believed, and I quote, any system of educational philosophy or administration is faulty that places that welfare of the school above that of the individual student. This sentiment is infused with a sense of service and mutual benefit which lives on and informs the values and culture of the Texas Tech University system to this day. It is with this spirit of service and desire to support and strengthen and refine each component institution in the attainment of their individual mission that we as a board and system leadership welcome Midwestern State University to the family of the Texas Tech University system. It's been a historical day and I must reiterate how excited we are to have Midwestern State join the Texas Tech University system and from a personal standpoint it's a vision and thought that I've had for many years, having grown up in the neighborhood, so to speak. And I shared that yesterday, but I have um, been around Midwestern State for the last 71 years, and I appreciate the community and who you are and what you accomplish and the benefits that are associated with the North Texas area as well. So thank you. We look forward to building a strong relationship with our new component institution and making great strides for higher education. We would like to close this historic meeting with a special video from Governor Greg Abbott. Hi, this is Governor Greg Abbott. Congratulations to Midwestern State University for becoming the newest member of the Texas Tech University system. For nearly a century, Midwestern State University has shined as a leader in the liberal arts education and has served as a pillar of the Wichita Falls community. I know that because my mother got her degree there many decades ago. This new partnership will help ensure that both Midwestern State as well as the Texas Tech system will continue to flourish and build on their legacy of excellence. 
I want to thank university leaders as well as Representative James Frank, Senator Drew Springer, and the Texas Legislature for making this possible. Working together, we will continue to establish Texas as the leader in higher education. May God bless you in your endeavors, and may God forever bless the great state of Texas. Are there any additional comments anyone would like to make before we adjourn? Since there is no further business to come before the board, do I hear a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This meeting of the Board of the Regents of the Texas Tech University System stands adjourned. <laughs>